Hello, my pouring friends. We are making our PVA pouring medium. So this is how I make my PVA pouring medium. And I'm making up quite a batch at the moment because I've got a lot going on over the next few weeks. So I figured I might pop the, the camera on and show you how I do this. Now you'll have just noticed, oh I should show you, this is the bottom of a pantyhose, you know, or a pantyhose socket. And I'm putting that into my container that the pouring medium's going into. Oh, I did it so well just before. And then putting my funnel there. And that will catch any go gollops or goops. Pardon me, that will, um, that sometimes occur with the... PVA mix. Not very often, but I did notice a few before, so I figured I would just do that. And here's some pouring medium I have just made, and yes, there were definitely some goops coming out of it, and I think it might be something coming off dried from my cup before. Now, I could have easily just gone and got another cup and chucked this out but why do that when I can filter it and it can it will just come through that um, little socket and will be fine and so in some regard we're actually starting backwards aren't we there's a little bit of goop there so I'll get rid of that but otherwise that pouring medium is ready to go and as you can see it's just drained out and through and so easy and it is, will be filtering through that sock there so it'll be lump free. Any PVA glue is fine. The one that I use is PVA wood glue from Bunnings and I buy it in the four litres. I think it works out to be about $24 for the four litres. So it's a really good price. Um, however, they do have it in the smaller one litre containers if you're not wanting to spend that amount of money um, when you're starting off and this pouring medium that we are creating today is a great way to start with your pouring it's cheap and effective and you will get those beautiful cells that you hear people talking about and you know it's fundamentally PVA and I eyeball mine I don't really have a recipe for it if I did I would say it's two cups of glue to about a third of a cup of water but I eyeball it because it just is easier and I and I can feel it I can feel when it's ready intuitively um, because I'm used to mixing up stuff on such a large scale now it's much easier for me just to eyeball so here I go adding my glue in and making sure I don't add it all the way to the top because I do need to add some water and I like to have enough space to fold my um but the, like I don't really stir I sort of fold I have water that's been sitting out of the tap for 24 hours I'm not really too sure why I think it's because that's how I prefer to drink it so that's why it's sort of around and so now I will add, well, gee, look at that. That's on the two cup line. So even without me knowing what I'm doing, I intuitively do it. It's exactly on the two cup line and I will now add water to one third. So that's two cups and one third. So if you did want a recipe, this would be it. And that's it now. And what I do is just ever, ever, so gently fold it in and it's much like cooking you know these ingredients need to get in with each other and at first it might seem like your glue is curdling but it's not it's just taking in another ingredient and slowly but surely it will start to smooth out. Now that's still way not enough mixing or folding and it's hard to tell um, when you first start off but I want to remind you of 
when you're making a cake mix, Jasmine, do you mind shaking your ears somewhere else? When you're doing a cake mix, you know, a 30 second job is not really, oh, probably not a cake mix, but something that needs the ingredients to really get into each other. A 30 second stir won't do it. You know, this is water being added into something that's white, so you can't even see properly when they've um, mixed. And I really do just try and fold it. And the reason I just do the folding is because it doesn't need to have a vigorous stir up like this. And it's probably more out of habit too. Like when I'm mixing my colors, I gently fold like this and bring my stick around the sides and push down. And that's to help me get the minimal amount of air bubbles in so that I don't have to get the air bubbles out um, once the paint's done. But we're talking about making a pouring medium at this point. The other important thing that I would remind you of is, is that once this is ready to go and in this container, we're going to leave it for 24 hours so that it can bind at that molecular level. Molecular level. Jeez, molecular level. All right, I know you know what I mean. And so this consistency is quite good. Can you see how that's, I'll just get that right into camera shot. Can you see how that's just drizzling in and leaving a little ridge in, into the um, pouring medium itself, but then sinking away. And sometimes it's easier to make your pouring medium just a little bit on the thicker side this isn't on the thicker side. This is a really nice consistency. Like I would use this consistency definitely in my pouring. Um, but don't worry if it's a, on a little bit of the thicker side because you can bring it down to your preferred pouring consistency um, when you mix it up with the water um, and paint later on. So I'm going to call this pretty much done now because I can see there's no more streaks. And when I let that paint drizzle, or sorry, pouring medium drizzle down, it looks nice and creamy and it feels really velvety to me. So it's essentially ready to go into the container. So I'll pour that in now. I use a funnel, as you saw earlier, and a socket to make sure that any little lumps don't go into the main container. In it goes. And off I go, I can make some more. And if you want to bear with me, I will make one more load while we're on camera and I'll think of any other things that I might want to talk about. Okay, Elmer's glue. From what I understand, it is the same as PVA glue, but you're looking for the white, creamy glue version like that, that you can see now. You might ask, why do we need to add the water? Well, simply because the glue is too thick to be a pouring medium. Um, this recipe that I have quoted being two cups of glue to a third cup of water, it may vary depending on your brand of PVA. PVAs come in many different consistencies to begin with. So it's really important that you get an understanding of the consistency you're going for rather than the recipe itself because if you're going to be mixing up a pouring medium made out of PVA and the PVA that you're using to start with is a different thickness to the one that I'm using right now the recipe is not going to work so just really take just watch how this flows though it's not mixed in properly yet and I'm hoping that you can see, though I know it's really difficult, how that's, I can see that it's not mixed in, like it's, there's waves of parts that are clear and it seems to be, you know, it's not obviously streaky, but I can see the streaks in it and, and I can feel 
that it's not creamy yet. Um, when you first add the water to the PVA, it can appear that the PVA is a bit lumpy, like adding milk to thick yogurt. And you need to sort of mix that a little bit until it becomes nice and creamy too. But here we go, look again at how this consistency is. It's lovely, it's beautiful and creamy and see how it just go when it comes off the pouring stick or the mixing stick rather it leaves a little ridge and then sinks back into itself now on the topic of pouring consistency there is no right or wrong you just get different effects so uh, this some people would call this quite a thick pouring medium but this will hold cells with perfect integrity a thinner one you possibly get larger cells and more blending however upon drying the cells may sort of may break down not 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 will break down they just might because it will again depend on the paint that you've used what silicon or how much silicon you've used how much silicon you've used in how many colors there is so many variations and i know that if you're watching this video and have gotten this far into listening to me you're quite new into pouring so i don't want to get you overwhelmed with all of these options they do exist and um there is no right or wrong in pouring there are just different ways of doing things and a thinner consistency um, you can still get the most amazing cells called blooming cells and you know they're just fabulous um, Gina DeLuca does some amazing work with in, you know in with quite thin um, pouring medium and, and mix up and Anne Marie has done some great experiments in regards to consistency so try to just free yourself up away from the right or the wrong and just let yourself go and flow with the paint um, and I think pretty much that's about all there is to it you know once you've got this nice consistency remember leave your pouring medium for 24 hours because it does need to regain and bind itself and also when you've left it for the 24 hours recheck its consistency it might have re-thickened up I've had some um, PVA pouring mediums that I have made in the past that when I leave them for 24 hours have kind of thickened up more not not to the original point of what their what the PVA glue was itself but certainly thicker than what I have made it to be okay so let's pour this into the three litre container I've got here um, just another tip I add one or two marbles into my large containers so that when I go to use whatever I'm using or whether it's a pouring medium or a mixed up paint um, I can just tip it two or three times and the marble itself will move through the the mixture and help mix it up without having to vigorously shake really avoid vigorously shaking at any cost because all you're really doing is mixing and getting heaps of air bubbles in that you do want to get out so um, gently does it you want to be pouring in a nice relaxed way so if you're finding yourself in a rush maybe it's not the best time to pour anyhow so that's about it on the PVA pouring medium I think naturally from this video I should definitely do one on how I mix my paints with the PVA pouring medium and show you a demonstration of how this um, pouring medium works and how it does form beautiful cells and how 
using a straight PVA pouring medium, you get a gorgeous shine. Um, Floetrol, which you would have heard of, or if you haven't, you will hear of soon, which by the way, looks like this. It dulls your paint finish down. But once you varnish it, all of your beautiful colors and vibrancies return. So I think that really is it. Um, I, have I tried to wind up twice now? Yes, I think I have. So look, if you have any questions, do pop them in the comments. I'm pretty good at trying to get back and answering questions um, with as much detail as I possibly can. And do come and join our pouring group on Facebook, Ready Steady Pour. As you know, there are quite a few uh, fluid art and pouring groups out on Facebook. I would encourage you to join a few. Um, you know, find a couple from your country, find a couple that are international and participate on those groups. Try not to just sit back and watch. Uh, people are incredibly friendly, incredibly generous with sharing their knowledge and you know the pouring community internationally is just so inspiring and invigorating and we really welcome you along so happy pouring and um, one last little bit of advice or encouragement is this I've known quite a few people who've poured for a while you know months or even a year and then they attend a workshop and their knowledge all comes together really really well and really really quickly um, and I guess it's just like anything if you go to a class you you know, the stuff that you're learning at home makes so much more sense you know you might know for example you not might know how to cook but then you go to a cooking class and things are so much better when you're having that hands-on experience so if you have got a um, person in your region that teaches pouring I would really encourage you to go along to at least one workshop so that you can really speak the language talk to a person in a back and forward kind of way have the hands-on experience and just feel all of your knowledge come together it's a great investment into yourself um, and honestly this hobby or art form or what how wherever you want to take it whether you just do it for something for your own pleasure or whether you use it as part of your toolbox for artistry and creativity it's well worth it it's incredibly rewarding okay that really was the last time I'm going to talk my goodness me <laughs> I love pouring so much all right Happy creating everyone and stay well. Later. It's actually nearly a week later from when I first made that PVA pouring medium. I've taken it and used it in a workshop and I'm just about to get it out now for us to do a quick mix up of paint with and a quick pour so you can see how great it works. Oh, I feel like I'm really, really rushing this week. But anyway, let's get to it. Where's the off button? So here we are. I'm going to probably eyeball it and not really use my um, scales. I tend to prefer eyeballing it um, and that's how I cook as well quite intuitively. And I've decided that today we're going to, in our example pour of our PVA pouring medium, we're going to use a pri do a primary colour pour using warm blue. I love warm blue. I love cool yellow. I love warm yellow too. Um, and cool red global impasto um, so I'll be putting the paints into the cups bringing the paints to consistency using a combination of water and flow troll 90% water 1% uh, 10% 90% <laughs> water 10% flow troll combo bringing that to consist pouring consistency and then adding our PVA pouring medium that's pre-made last week over here um, 
And so I'll do that now and I'll fast forward that because it can get a bit I've boring. changed my mind. I'm only going to use water to bring the paints to consistency because part of this whole process is about showing you how you can do a pour without having to rely on flow troll. So I'm now going to bring the paints to consistency with only water. Here we go. Here we are at the pouring table. I'm just going to get my canvas out and I love showing you this over and over. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I'm going to squirt some water and do some drumming. But you can hear that sound of that flatness, the flat drum. Just getting my water bottle out, giving it a bit of a squirt. And give it a shake. I'm only just shaking it to get the water across. I squirt the back because I, if I squirt the front and do a flip cup on it or do any painting on it, the paint will run. But this tightens the canvas straight away. Listen. Amazing. One of the best exciting, most exciting tips I ever learnt. Often those real little ones are exciting. Just going to go and get those cups of paint. And here they are, one, two, three, four, I'm going to do our flip cup, one this way, and I'm just going to get a piece of cardboard, oh, where's my, oh, it's not quite big enough. Hang on a minute. Oh, I'm such a this part of the flip cup. Um, when I'm doing more than one flip cup, I like to use a piece of cardboard like so, like I just did, and then roll or pull the card away and it goes onto the, the canvas there. And look, I'm just gonna see if we can um, zoom in there and look at some of the cells that we're getting already just there on this little sample piece. How cool. Really, 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 really nice. So, so our paints are in the cups and at the moment they're all sort of blending and going into each other and it's a, a really important step and that is just giving it a moment to sort of transfer within each other. And that's what helps create some of the really great effects you see in pouring. And um, it will be interesting for us to flip both of these and then do the dirty pour with the other cup over there around the outsides, just to see what the differences are um, using this PVA mix, using two different pouring methods. Or techniques. Okay, I'm just going to get something to pop the cups in. And now I'm back, and here we go. So I'm going to do a flip it, flip, drag it that way, back towards here. And this one, like that. And how nice is all of that going? Really beautiful, beautiful cells, shapes, lacing, color contrasts. The paint itself is just rolling out beautifully and it's forming right before our eyes. Should we zoom in to help you see what's going on? Yes, we should. So, what I'm going to do is just let that keep really um, 
letting those patterns emerge in front of us and in a moment I'll give it a little torch and I'm inclined to probably not tilt this too much if anything only in the one direction just to get a little bit more coverage here and to ensure that our paint mix is not too thick and left to dry uh, on the canvas because that is something that causes cracking when your paint mix when your paint is too thick on the canvas and because it's so thick it will dry at various different rates and cause cracking okay so we'll come zoom back out maybe if the camera thing lets me there we go I'm going to do a little tilt bringing this that way and then I'm going to do a dirty pour around the other areas and let's see the differences in effect so just slowly moving oh I forgot to torch I'm inclined to um, stop and torch. If you don't have a torch at home, by the way, you can just do this and drop your canvas and let some of the um, air bubbles rise to the surface. But I have a torch, a massive torch that I love, but I think I might have. Oh, looks like I'm not going to be able to use it today. The igniter's gone on it. Well, there you go. That's going to not be good. Look, it's because I've resined it all up here. It's locked in. I've got no ignition. Oh. I'll go and get a lighter. lighter. Let's hope I don't blow myself up. I'm a bit scared. Maybe I'll... do that again I think I'll um, whip down to Bunnings tomorrow and buy myself another torch but that's another story oh I've got something sticky on my fingers all right let's get back to just tilting this ever so little bitish not too much because we've got some really really beautiful effects in there I don't even think I should do much more than that. And we're going to do our dirty pour around the edges and a lot of the paint's going to come off, I think. Anyway, here we go. I'll just do a little bit of a ring there. Might get a little bit of that red to come through. And then across here. Now I'm just waiting for these to emerge, shapes to emerge, and they certainly are. We've got some, especially down this side here, some beautiful, beautiful patterns emerging. So I'm just going to slowly bring this over. Slowly not working so well for me. Just covering the whole canvas. I'm catching some of the paint here and drag that across there. It's 
done. The whole canvas is covered. We've got beautiful, beautiful, beautiful um, colours. I want to just stretch this part here out a little bit. And then I'm going to have to leave it because I'm the massive over over tilter and the massive over stretcher and I get really see how I'm talking about it and still doing it isn't that just shocking could have really probably put stretched a lot more off and not necessarily used it all on the on this one canvas all right I'm going to take my gloves off and bring you in for a look Very gooey on that one. You ready? Sorry about that. And so there you have it. Your PVA glue haul. And in uh, my next video, I will post or, or, or talk to this and show you it dry. But there's quite a few people asking for this to be put up, so I won't delay any further and get this up for you all. So, PVA brought to pouring consistency with water and then paints brought to pouring consistency, pardon me, with water mixed together and beautiful beautiful effects beautiful beautiful outcomes happy pouring my friends